Hi. <laughs> Hi. So what do you what do you guys want to talk about? Uh, oh, we were know. actually just talking about. We wanted to ask you your thoughts on the Airboat franchise. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I can I just can I just tell you how funny your videos have been? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> it's all James magical editing. Oh my god, and the cat just shut up. That was so cute. So, so you guys have all seen you guys have all seen the yes, film, right? I've, oh, I've watched many, it many times, five times really. already. Okay. All right. So we can talk about that. But I just have a question about Miss Miss Martian because you have to understand. Like <laughs> mm. I'm not geeky at all with this stuff. Yeah. But I I was curious why there wasn't any mention of Martian Manhunter. Isn't he connected to Miss Martian or no? I'm the comic book person on the Watchtower database. This is Ted. I um so hey Ted. <laughs> hey Susan. <laughs> um so Miss Martian came in like Jeff Johns Teen Titans run in the like late 2000s. And she was revealed to be not a green Martian, but a white Martian. Uh, they were evil. So she's like inspired okay. by John to be a hero. But in the DC animated universe, we don't have white Martians. See, this is the thing that's crazy. <laughs> if I, even if I wanted to like just educate myself and just really, which I had tried. I mean, even you guys who like know so much about this, it's like really confusing. It, <laughs> yeah. just... Oh, I I I, I, com I completely agree. I mean, like every every two weeks, I have to deep dive into a different character, and I'm just like, I just don't know where to start. And you guys are so like, you guys are so sweet about it, but like, there are some people who are just defensive and 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 just like, it, I don't know, like they just mm -hmm. it's too militant. much. You know, you guys <laughs> are right, militant. You guys are pretty. I mean, you guys are sweet and cool about it, and. But there are other people out there who are just like, you know, it has to be a certain way and yeah, it gets like really confusing and, and, and odd. But we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to be having a chat with uh, Eric Carrasco pretty soon and where he had. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, he's, he's talked to us already a little bit about how he's going to. Um, he had a kind of headcanon, I guess, for what Miss Martian's uh, origin was going to be. And so I'm hoping that we can talk to him and that he'll reveal that she was, in fact, a basketball playing Labrador. Um, <laughs> so welcome back, everybody, to another Watchtower Database exclusive interview. Today we have back with us Susan Eisenberg again for the second time. Uh, thank you for blessing us with your presence, Susan. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. And I think it's amazing how much you guys have grown your brand. I mean, that's such a like weird word, but it's really true. Yeah. Thank you very much. So well done, you guys. You are, you are yes, definitely very helpful you. with that. Your constant social media support uh, of us is very much appreciated. <laughs> Well, because you're the good, you're good guys, and you know I like to support people who are good-hearted and supportive, and you've always been really um, supportive of me. So I mean, it's it goes both ways, truly. The uh, the last time we talked was a couple of years ago, uh, which is does not feel like it's been that long. You mentioned something really big uh, that during that interview that we were gonna that we were going to love. You guys will love it so much, <laughs> and, and we were you know freaking out about it for forever. And I kept asking you like, is this the thing? Oh, was it was it Batman and Harley Quinn? No, I'm not even in that movie and all this. Stuff. <laughs> and then it was it was finally uh, we finally figured out what it was. You know, when the everything started coming out for this movie. Um, so now that the movie is finally out, is it nice to be able to talk about it and not have to keep so hush hush? It's so great being. I mean, because you guys know that I I feel like the the fans of the show and I and look we're in it together and you know and and so to see this iteration of Wonder Woman back um, with the Batman and with Superman, it I mean it was such a big secret to hold yeah. and I really had to I mean you, you know like I said in another interview the other day Warner Brothers has this huge you know they have their own publicity and they want to release the information as they do so you can't just jump ahead and say hey guys yeah. um, you know no matter how badly you want to so now we can finally talk about it but I knew <laughs> that the fans would just you know go crazy as I did when I first saw it yeah, there's I can't imagine, you know, you're talking with us and I'm sure many, many other people at the time, you know, we're at the our last interview was just about, you know, a, a general kind of overview of your career that at the time was in the past. And you had to, you know, keep tight lipped about, oh, I've, actually, I've just recorded <laughs> another thing. Well, yeah, I mean, and 
you know, like it, it's interesting because um, all the other iterations, whether it's, you know, ju- Injustice 2 or DCU online game, mm-hmm. you know, like what whatever the project is, nothing comes close for me personally as recording the Justice League version of the one of, of course, Wonder Woman. Yeah. I mean, she, mm-hmm. you know, for me, she is Wonder Woman. And what's so great about DCU online game is that um, SJ, who is the creative director and did so much of the Wonder Woman I recorded, she's a huge Justice League fan, as is Eric. <laughs> so like when you have people who grew up with the Justice League and they have that idea of her, it makes it so much easier for me when I walk into a session. Um, because they're like, you know that thing you did in the Justice League? Do that. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> As opposed to like Injustice, which is, the, you know that thing you did? Don't do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so so it did feel like riding a bike again. Oh, my gosh. I mean, like, unbelievable. I mean, ju- I mean, seriously, I can't even be hyperbolic about it because... <laughs> Like it when I I was so overwhelmed when I saw that it was her. I didn't know until I went in to do ADR, um, additional dialogue recording, where um, you know I did the grunts and all like uh-huh. a, a, some extra dialogue. I didn't know that it was going to be her when I first you know. So it was such a big deal to me to see her picture. That's interesting because yeah, it, I mean, I assume that you probably have kind of a different approach to. Um, recording the character if you think it's, you know, a different design or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think having Bruce Tim in the room always just brings me there because, you know, he hired me and there was something in my voice and my read that, you know, spoke to him enough that he hired me all those years ago. So if I see him and I'm looking through the booth and he's on the other side of it, I'm pretty much there. But then you, you bring the original Diana and that vision of her and you know, you saw the movie. I mean, mm-hmm. she is spectacularly drawn in this movie. I mean, she she just pops in every yeah. scene that she's in. I did. I mean, didn't you think? Yeah, no, it's mm-hmm. it's definitely. Uh, uh, there's, I mean, the show would go back and forth between different animation companies, and you know, I had my favorites and least favorites and stuff, and whatever they've been using, whoever they've been using for Batman, Harley Quinn, this movie, they they've been doing a really good job. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty brilliant. I mean, I got to say, with all the characters, but, um, you know, like there were some sequences that Sam Liu, the director, did, you know, when she's having that fight in the sky. Yeah. And, like, oh, my God, it took my breath away. <laughs> yeah, that was, was, that's my favorite scene really, in the movie. Yeah. Oh, that is my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> that? Yeah, that's my favorite scene in the movie. I mean, I love that. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> the... I'm sorry. We're having troubles with, you know, oh, which who says the next question? <laughs> oh, so, so, I, no worries. I'm, my, my Internet, I guess, just cut out. So I had dropped out of the call entirely for just a second. Oh, and no. I, I'm, I'm just <laughs> oh. yeah, I'm just now back. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know where you guys are. Oh, well, Susan was saying that Airbud 2 was her favorite. Of the franchise. <laughs> it's probably mine, too. <laughs> we're, we're wanting to talk, you know, as much about Fatal Five as possible, but. Uh, the last the last time uh, I guess they spoke to you because I wasn't part of the channel yet. Um, the Wonder Woman movie right. actually hadn't even come out yet, um, and I was just kind of I, I was kind of curious. Like, do you have any thoughts about uh, the characters, like the following explosion in popularity, or has that affected how you approach the character at all, or how people approach you now that you know? I'm sure there's been trickle down from Gal Gadot to to you, you know, a, a, as far as popularity goes, back and forth. You know what I think it it, um, it didn't affect how I voice the character or interpret the character because it's you know such um, different projects and and you know I mean it's just so different it's it's apples and oranges from you know the the live action movie to the animation projects but it definitely um, brought a lot of attention to the character in general and then to me specifically as it did to Linda Carter I mean just because Wonder Woman was everywhere and people were talking about her and people um, were excited to see her. And the fans had waited so long Mm -hmm. for a solo feature and they were finally getting it. And not only did they um, finally get it, but they loved it and they embraced it and they embraced her, the character. So it gave me a lot of opportunity to be interviewed 
about her and about my my involvement in her narrative and her history. So, you know, I, I was just so grateful for that. For some people, it goes from Linda Carter to go. Right. And fair enough. Mm-hmm. But then there's like this whole gang of, of like people like you <laughs> for whom, you know, it's the animation parts are very real in her story. And so I was just grateful that people were aware of that as being part of her narrative um, for the fans. It was just, it was very gratifying. Definitely, definitely, for sure. Well, but you'd be, but you'd be surprised because there are a lot of people, you know, there are, there are, there's a fan base out there that knows only Linda and now Gal, there's a fan base that didn't even know Linda because they were too young. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it's like, I think across the board, <laughs> My dog is barking. I think across the board, it was okay. You know, oh, sorry. Oh, I, I have two here. One of them will not be barking, but one of them is. So let me just bring him. Come on, come on. Okay. It wouldn't come be a Watchtower on. database podcast without a pet interrupt. <laughs> right. Come on, Linda. Okay. Now it will be quiet. <laughs> sorry about that. No, uh, I think he heard us talk about Airbud, and he was a little jealous of the situation. <laughs> but... No, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. Well, so um, anyway, so... yeah. So with the with the Gal Gadot movie, um, I mean, this that came out during a time, an era now of Wonder Woman, where the character is a lot more of a Xena like warrior princess, literally. Um, compared to, I mean, she's always has been, but compared well, she to was an accountant lot... at one point. Sure. <laughs> yeah, a secretary of the Justice Society. Yeah. But so, you know, right, uh, right. right. So I my my question that I have actually written here is about how Wonder Woman has a sword in the movie and whether that affected your approach to the character, but now we're finding, you know, you didn't actually see the character till you were doing ADR. Do you have any opinion then on you know whether or not your version of Wonder Woman needs a sword <laughs> because she's it kind of seemed you know, to hold her own without one in the show. And now she just kind of randomly has a sword, I guess. I mean, she had bracelets. She, you know, she has sure. a lasso. So um, I thought, you know, when I asked about the sword, because I just saw Bruce at the premiere, you know, I think it really was like an homage to Gull yeah. and um, and to the, that film. And I love that. And I thought the sword play was just really dynamite with, with Jessica Cruz and that whole scene. I, mm-hmm. I just thought that was brilliant. So I liked it. It was a cool addition. I mean, I wouldn't have seen it coming um, and I wouldn't have anticipated that she would have one. But now that she does, I kind of like it. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I'm, now, now I'm just used to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely like it was it was I wouldn't say jarring, but it was definitely noticeable to me. You know, I've I focus on drawing these characters and, and creating digital artwork for them and stuff all the time that whenever we're doing, right. whenever we're doing like the trailer reactions and stuff, that was something that popped out to me as like, Oh, mm-hmm. oh okay. That's interesting. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that, new. but yeah. yeah. yeah, And I think it was an absolute nod to the movie and to, um, to that version of Wonder Woman. Sure. And you know, that, that to me, that, that there was something that, that connected the, the animation to the live action. I thought that was a really cool, cool thing. So, so following on from that uh, with the whole sword and everything, I feel, I feel like uh, because of the sword being there, uh, Wonder Woman kind of came off more warrior like in this film than she did in the previous shows. I mean, obviously, you know, she did have the warrior spirit to her and everything. However, at the same time, uh, in the in this movie, uh, your character kind of takes Jessica Cruz under her wing, and we've seen that dynamic before with uh, you know Batman and Robin, right. or with with uh, with Superman and Supergirl. But we've never we've never seen that with with your character. So I was just wondering what your thoughts are on, Although, on you know. Well, you know, but I think I think we did see it because um, Maid of Honor. Um, I think that there was a little bit of that yeah. with Audrey, and also. Um, in one of the movies, I think it was Apocalypse with Supergirl. Super mm-hmm. Okay, I I, I, um, I I completely missed Apocalypse. <laughs> I, I, you should go back. I need a yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a it's true on fan, Maddie. It's on Get DC Universe. I think I should probably go watch that tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there is very much like a protecting, um, you know, a mentoring, nurturing side, but also tough. Um, it's in this in this movie. You know, Sam was just talking about that with that Bruce was, you know, saying, oh, I don't know if she'd be so tough. And then he was convinced, okay, she, she can be tough with Jessica Cruz because the sword, but it's, you know, she's saying she's kicking some ass there with, 
with Jessica and um, without the sword even, that was always a piece of her. And I, I just think the sword is just another instrument of that. I definitely think your voice uh, just naturally has elements of both of that in it. And I mean, I guess take that as you will, because you can't control that. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, but true. honestly, I mean, I think it, it, I think in some ways that's, that's me being the luckiest person sure. that, that Bruce um, and Andrea heard that in my voice um, because there are so many people who, you know, could voice her. I mean, yeah. it, you know, this, this isn't like, it's not like I'm doing some crazy, raspy, weird, lower register, you know, nutty thing with my voice. It's, it's basically my speaking voice. It's a little bit lower than my speaking voice, but it's basically how I sound. And yeah. I, I just, I just got excited extremely lucky yeah <laughs> since yeah. we're talking about it, i might as well throw in uh i, w- I was kind of curious um last time we talked and i didn't get to ask you is when you guys were all in the booth together back in the day and you know mm-hmm. there's there's some of the main actors like phil lamar um to an extent carl lumbly are kind of putting on a character in t- well uh, you all are, <laughs> but more so maybe, no, you know, I Phil. Mean, yeah. yeah it did, was that ever a different um, atmosphere between you guys? How, you know, you and Kevin and George are basically just your own voices kind of amplified. And whereas Phil is doing his, you know, hunky giant chest voice. <laughs> it doesn't because there's something that happens when you're reading that dialogue and you're in that room. Yeah. That it doesn't quite, it doesn't sound exactly like I would talk. Sure. Okay. Like I'm talking yeah. right now, <laughs> but I will say it just made me appreciate the gifts that Phil had vocally, and Kevin also. Interestingly enough, when because Kevin is in is in a lower register, sure. and when Kevin's talking to you, and then he goes into Batman voice, <laughs> it, it, there really is a distinction. Um. So. And well, and especially someone Carl, like Mark Hamill or something, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, totally. Totally. And and listen, there there's there's a skill set to that that is like brilliant. And I have such respect for that. I was lucky that in this particular job and the job I've had most often in the last, you know, twenty something years has been I has not been demanding in that way. I don't have to do that zany character voice. Yeah. And um and that's a good thing because, you know, I'm not great at them, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> when you make a living sounding this way, and I make my living mostly during commercials, you know, sounding a certain way with like somewhat of a polish to your mm-hmm. voice, it's much harder to let go of it and to um, be uninhibited about it. And um, it's it's not as easy for me as it is for a lot of people like a Tara Strong or a Great Delisle who just fall right into right. those wonderful characters. I mean, I have such respect for it. But no, in the room, it didn't, it, you know, I just had respect for, for Phil and for Carl because they managed to, you know, they're such good actors. I think that's really what it comes down to. And uh-huh. And so they would just blow me away with their acting ability it was just a very talented room which is why it was so intimidating when I first started because I was like holy smokes I mean these are some heavy hitters <laughs> and now now you're staying right there as, uh, alongside them that's awesome so thank you thank you yeah that I guess to move the conversation now a little more towards characterization um do you feel like Diana has evolved a little bit since we last saw her in Justice League Unlimited like were you given any information on maybe what she's been up to since we last saw her in JLU? Um, what's been going on in the character's life? Why she might have gotten a sword? You know, it definitely felt more mature um, because, again, I think with the Jessica Cruz character, if she were just playing with Superman and Batman, um, that's one thing. But the introduction of these younger characters of Starboy, um, Miss Martian and Jessica Cruz, it makes you feel almost like an elder stateswoman. So you, <laughs> I, it felt a little bit more mature, not vocally. It's not like, it's not like Bruce said, you know, age her a little bit, would you? I mean, it wasn't that. It just, you know, I felt like she's been doing a lot of missions. They've been working together. There's a... They're at their prime, I guess. It's, you've yeah, had they are. five and seasons together, of shows. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And, and so, you know, she's not that young girl from the mascara that we first saw in season one in paradise lost i mean she's evolved she's matured and um and i again i think having younger 
characters in the movie really points that out in a way that without those younger characters, um, you wouldn't see it nearly as much. Well, yeah, I mean, and the adventure continues, right? So that's where we're at now. Well, you know, that's <laughs> what I, that, oh my gosh. I mean, seriously, that I, you know, I, I can't even tell you how long it's been since I've um, wanted this adventure to continue. Yeah. Mostly because once I started having the conversation with the fans, you realize what the TV show meant mm -hmm. and the place it, the place it has in people's hearts um, and, and in their memories. And that's a powerful thing to be told on a regular basis. Yeah. We got a whole and YouTube channel about it. <laughs> there would be nothing more gratifying to me professionally than seeing that happen where we get to revisit these characters as an ensemble in a movie, right. the seven of us. Um, this was brilliant that we got to play the three of us, but it was not their intention right. mm -hmm. to do a reunion with this movie. But it really is the hashtag jail reunion that kind of, took this on a different course if if that movement didn't exist this would have been a very different experience jail reunion started to blow up and they said hey wait a minute um and so this was like a taste of the reunion but i i do believe for the first time that there will absolutely be a reunion movie awesome That's cool. <laughs> you heard it here first well, I'm just <laughs> yeah i mean i i would never say that had i not heard bruce sure. and i mean i wish the camera could have panned to me when <laughs> bruce said that at the because i think i i practically fell off my chair um because i i couldn't believe that he was saying that openly and saying it to the fans and sharing that in the room i was shocked and blown away and just so like giddy. I was giddy. I was giddy. <laughs> well, because I mean, for years, Bruce Tim has said, you know, oh, I don't really have an interest in returning to this universe. It's, right. it's over. Right. You know, Despite it, the fact that he yep. keeps doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, you know, we have not been together as those characters. Yeah. I mean, I've done other projects. Kevin obviously has done other projects and same with George. But we have never done one where you have music cues right, from exactly. the original oh, show. Yeah. And you have, to me, it was so funny because no one was saying anything um, all along. And then all of a sudden you're like, you're seeing the three of us giving interviews together and you're hearing the music cues and you're, and then you see her in the studio. I mean, Wonder Woman. And you're <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that's from, she's from just like, this is going to happen, yeah. kids. <laughs> this is going to happen. So, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, it just feels magical to me that, that there's a chance. And Bruce, when we were at WonderCon and we were walking to one of our events together, he said to me that working on the Justice League was like probably the best experience he's, ha he's had professionally. I hope I, so. I it just shows. think it's very, yeah. it's promising. I, it's just promising. And finally, I can say that right. out loud. You know, the jail reunion was, is like, has a life of its own yeah. and um that's finally reached people over at warner brothers and that's very gratifying that's really gratifying definitely yeah. definitely we're excited for it, it gives us more content yeah. to make to <laughs> sure <show>. of course <laughs> yeah no and and just to be able to deliver that to yeah. the fans um would be I, I mean i just can't think of anything i'd be more proud of well i'll let maddie actually move on <laughs> to his question finally yeah so, so, so <laughs> okay ahead, well I, I had so i had a You're i just I, I i feel like in the time between justice league unlimited left the air and this movie coming to to life uh there it, it just seems like there's so much that's shifted like in 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 the way the film was, I guess, approached altogether. Um, all the the extra gore in it, you know, the cursing, which you couldn't do on Cartoon Network. Uh, and then you have like the more like mature and down to earth storyline of like the, the, the anxiety and the mental illness that just just yeah. really, really mm -hmm. touches on honestly stuff that, uh, you know, I, I feel like multiple of us on the call deal with as well as just a ton of people, you know, in our generation that grew up with the show. And then on top of that, like you, you've got, you've got Eric who was a fan of the show now writing the movie, just how like different, I guess, was it, I guess, going from, from, you know, the show to this project, like with, with all of those things kind of in the soup now. Intense. I mean, when I went to record, walking into the studio and having Bruce there, 
you know, I can't describe it. I can't. <laughs> like we sat next to each other at the screening, Bruce and uh, Kevin and George and I. And when they did that shot where they introduced Wonder Woman in, in the, you know, like they tilt it up to her, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it starts on her feet and then it just tilts up. Um, like I just grabbed Bruce's arm and <laughs> just gave it such a squeeze because. Was that your first time seeing the movie too? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I've seen other pieces of it, but not yeah. t- all together like that. And so um, it's such a powerful experience. And Eric having been a fan of the original series. I didn't know who Eric was. Um, We met when I came to record. I only knew that, you know, I mattered in some weird way to him because he was crying. No, Um, (laughs) because he was just, he was, he was like so sweet. He was so sweet to me after the recording session. And, and he said, God, I mean, I just grew up with your show. Like it was just that it was very powerful to have somebody who, for whom the show meant so much, having a part in bringing these characters back to life and giving them words to say. And I can only imagine what that felt like for him, having grown up with it, that he's now putting dialogue in Batman and Wonder Woman and, mm-hmm. and Superman's mouth. I mean, it's, it's just heady stuff. You know, obviously I wasn't that intimately involved in the, the mental illness stories in the movie, um, but I'm so proud of being a part of something that's dealing with that i'm i'm so shocked that that was such a big part of the movie and i think it's so brave of the storytellers of the studio um to tackle that and tackle those issues in two characters Mm -hmm. in two very distinctive characters i i was so touched as a viewer um by starboy and jessica cruz and boy that ending yeah. Wowza. Yeah. I mean, it really got me. It re- I don't want to, no spoilers, but it really, <laughs> but seriously, if you haven't seen it by now, come on, people. Let's, let's <laughs> Why are you listening going. to this? <laughs> you no, know, but like, didn't it get you? I mean, I was so yeah, like, yeah. oh, I think I it shed was a really tear. intense. Yeah, I definitely did. I definitely did. So it, you know, I, I think that we had some pretty, um, we, there were a lot of episodes in the series that got me and that there were moments, whether I mean, some of them were mine, but a lot of them were other people's, whether it was Jean, because Jean's stories always got me, mm-hmm. or um, the Christmas um, oh, episode, yeah. which is brilliant. I'm not even oh, in God. it. Yeah, Kevin and I aren't even in it. Um, and then, oh, gosh, the love story with, uh, with Green Lantern yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Hawkgirl, like, totally got me. So I think that we had some real moments in our show, more than moments, story arcs and stories. But you didn't have as much freedom as you have sure. with, um, you know, with a film. I mean, it's just, you know, and, and but with that, you also get more violence and, you know, you that freedom gives you other things as well. Um, and people could argue either way that it's a good thing or a bad thing. And you know, Eric is, I think, you know, barely older than the three of us. So he gives us hope. <laughs> in, in this oh, world gosh. I mean, it's, it's like all of a sudden i'm watching my son write my dialogue i mean it's, it's, it's he's, he's he's such a kid i'm sure he'll be glad in, to in know you call him his, like, your son yeah <laughs> well it does, you know like i'm so proud of him is that i mean it's crazy because between supergirl and this and sure. just, you know what you guys the truth is whenever you see somebody's dreams coming true um or doing something they love and they're finding some success with it it's exhilarating yeah, to see that and true. so that's what i felt when i watched eric like he's living the, his dream <laughs> uh-huh. and he's working with bruce kim and sam and you know he's in these rooms with you know he's working with kevin smith <laughs> uh-huh. i mean it's 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 just i'm so happy for him yeah well we'll be it we'll definitely pass on the sun comment <laughs> <laughs> So you, okay, fair enough. you had mentioned uh, Bruce Tim, you know, he's in the booth listening as you guys are recording. And of course, he he did the uh, the Richard Mole impression for Two-Face uh, <laughs> when yeah. you guys are recording. Yeah. Um, yeah. Besides that stuff and, and, you know, the movie, of course, utilizing his art style. 
how involved is he on these projects uh, that he's listed, you know, as an executive producer for? Is he there pretty often with you guys, or is he just kind of like a uh, they'll figure it out? They they know what they're doing, kind of a guy. <laughs> no, he's such a hands-on guy, and he knows this universe as you like. You know, you're walking through the con with Bruce. It's like he needs bodyguards. I mean, it's <laughs> just crazy. This man is like, you know, such a superstar in this uh-huh. world, and. And he's so intimately um, involved with with every aspect of it. So, yeah, I mean, he, he and Sam were talking about when they first got it back from the animators and, and all the things they were doing to, you know, to to bring it to where it is now. I mean, it, he worked, I think, very, you know, very hard to, to get it to where it was. I mean, obviously, it's collaborative, so you have all these other factors in it. But, no, it wasn't like he was sitting on the sidelines, you know, eating bonbons. Right. Saying, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, he was in there. He was in there. Do you guys still all record in a big group or is it all individual these days? The, you know what? If it were an animated series, um, it would definitely be all of us. In a, in a movie, sometimes it's it's like whoever you can get together yeah, yeah. because of scheduling. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, so so we weren't all together like we had been with just with the series. But I suspect if we do do a... Um, a reunion movie, I have a very strong feeling we'd all be together. <laughs> nice. I hope so. Well, as Wonder Woman, you never you never really got to interact with a lot of Batman's um, like extra cast in the Justice League Unlimited show because there was a bat embargo. That's I'm doing air quotes at the time. Um, they wouldn't let like Batgirl, Robin, uh, Joker show up in Justice League Unlimited. So uh, some appear in this movie. We see little cameos of Two Face, like we said earlier, um, Harley yeah. Quinn, Poison Ivy. Would you like to do yeah, a movie? Yeah, that was cool, wasn't that? It was really cool to see that. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Arkham Asylum. Would you like to interact with those characters? Have Wonder Woman against Poison Ivy Harley, or like maybe a love triangle with Batgirl, and bring the Wonder Bad stuff back up? Yeah, no, I, I'm not really. <laughs> not, that doesn't speak to me at all. The Wonder, okay. the love triangle, because <laughs> like fighting back, over yeah. Batman, like no can. Yeah, no can do. Wonder Woman's got a sword now. I feel like she'd be able to take on Batgirl. (laughs) Batgirl's got no shot. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, I just, well, not even, like, you know, because I know that there are all these fans out there who love Batgirl with Wonder Woman, with uh, Wonder Woman, oh. (laughs) No, Batgirl, Batgirl with Batman. And like, you know, that's, you know, it's all good as far as I'm concerned. But no, I'm not going to fight over you know, with her over <laughs> Batman. But I would love to interact and I would love to have some scenes. I think that would be awesome. I mean, that would be awesome. I, I, I hadn't thought about that, but that really would be very cool. And yeah. it was a kick to see them in the movie because yeah. I'm never in a movie with them. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> you know, so it was, it was, I mean, yeah, it was, I loved that. That, that was just, to me, that was such a um, tip of the hat you know, to, it was just fun. I thought for the fans, that'll be so fun to see all those characters. And there were Justice League unlimited episodes where characters were seen, but you didn't have any dialogue. Right. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was always really cool too. Yeah. Yeah, we could do it. You could just have Batgirl walk into the Batcave and then see you guys together and then go, oh, and just leave. <laughs> well, you know, you may want to mention that to to Eric. You yeah, know, just, yeah, yeah. He's a writer, so he always needs ideas. Ted and I so what, have pages so what you're telling and pages us, of ideas. So what you're telling us is Eric is currently writing the JL reunion script, <laughs> and he's taking Hot ideas. Think, yeah. This is the thing. I think I think Eric is always writing the JL. Reunion. I think yeah. he's always. I think I think so in his downtime. Yeah. First of all, first of all, can you can you believe how much time we're spending on Eric? But right. secondly, I mean, isn't he always like, I mean, I would think that that's, you know, like he's, you know, off on vacation and he's thinking about the jail reunion and what script he would write. If you grew up like he grew up and you become a writer, I think that's always kind of there. But right. no, I don't have any insight. I, I can who, confirm that. Yeah, I mean, we, don't, we, haven't, we haven't even confirmed that there is a Justice League reunion movie. Sure. So we can't confirm that there's a writer yet. I, I can tell you that I have not recorded anything for reunion that that's like legit so well maybe the next movie will be, have everyone except batman superman and wonder woman and you'll just have to oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah, well, you know it's out. like i think michael rosen it's okay michael rosenbaum i think at one point um wrote on twitter like i guess my invitation got <laughs> yeah, exactly. lost in the mail people want to be part of the storytelling people want to work people want to be a part of 
um, all of it. So, you know, it's like you, you almost feel guilty having the three of us without the other four. It almost feels like, right. okay, where, where's the rest of the guys yeah. and, and, and hot girl. Um, but hopefully that, that time will come. Well, and we also just saw your, uh, no spell check in the utility belt tweet to Kevin Conroy. <laughs> so. I know. Really, like, I mean, I was texting with him and I'm like, really, Kevin, <laughs> really? <laughs> He spelled your name wrong for those who don't understand what the joke is. I, yeah. <laughs> he's really something. I mean, he's really, he's such yeah, a character. I'm sure. He's he such seems a like such a sweet guy. I hope we can talk with him yeah. sometime. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much media out there that is saying, hey, can we talk to you? So the fact that Sam, I mean, I think that's the beauty of, of yes. social media, frankly, we agree. because you get to interact with people you would never have access to. Yeah, I mean, we're we're talking to you because of Instagram. We talked to Alan Burnett because of words with friends. <laughs> that's uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> so, all sorts yeah, that's of amazing. That's amazing. It's, it's it's so funny because like whenever uh, whenever the the preview came out and it was like Eric is writing the thing, like I got in touch with him and he's like, "Dude, I'm a fan of you guys." Yeah, exactly. And I was I was no, just that's awesome. Just the the whole social media thing is just bizarre how uh you know how it puts it people in touch with each other. So as we're kind of winding down on the Fatal Five questions, um, this last one about or this last Justice League related one um, just kind of calls back to the the original show. We we recently like we're we as you probably know we're doing research all the time on the most nitpicky aspects of these yeah. TV shows, and uh, we happened upon yeah. a a page of. Uh, old Dwayne McDuffie uh, Q&A uh, mm. on his forum, people asking him about, oh, where's this character at this time and that kind of stuff where, you know, he would be the man to tell you. There's there's one of them where he talks about uh, in his head that Wonder Woman in the Justice League uh, pilot episode, you know, the season the series premiere is about yeah. eight, 18 years old. <laughs> and mm. that, was, that was something that was kind of like, oh, I didn't you see her as only 18 years old. And of course, you know, the whole molded from clay Greek God immortality kind of stuff may kind of affect that. Were you ever given that kind of information about her before starting, you know, a biography kind of a stuff about her or did you just, is that news to you as well? (laughs) You know what? I don't think I, 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 there was definitely not a number put on it like 18, but I absolutely, you know, heard her in my head as, a, as, as like that, that girl woman, you know, like, yeah. you know, like between 18 and 25, I'd sure. say. Um, again, when she was leaving the mascara and going to a man's, like doing all of that, it, it really, to me, she seemed young and um, really trying to find her, you know, her own space in the world and yeah. where she could fit in. And, you know, to be frank, I mean, and I think maybe I shared this with you before I was doing the same thing. I was just trying to find my voice within the series and it, it kind of worked in that first season. Um, you know, I do sound a little bit unsure because I was unsure. It mm-hmm. was a real, like it was a very scary um, as, a, as, extraordinary as it was to book that job it was scary to book that job too sure. i walked into a situation you know really green and um, even though i worked on other shows i'd never been a series regular on a show before so it was really super intimidating intimidating so uh, you know no, to your question i mean Dwayne obviously would <laughs> know more about the character than i would sure. <laughs> you know, he was a ge- he was a he was a genius but no i i mean i was never told okay she's 18 player is 18 yeah yeah um but certainly that she was young i i definitely felt that she was young and yet she has those such defined cheekbones in the first season you know? <laughs> well <laughs> well thanks for noticing <laughs> um, yeah I mean, that, that, you know i was drawn that way i mean that, that, you know i can't take any credit for the cheekbones i mean she's, she's nah, that stunning was all your maybe idea. she's drawn yeah, with it maybe it's she's... maybelline <laughs> sure. exactly and you know what don't hate her because she's beautiful <laughs> no she's she's so beautiful like to me that is like the she's so lovely um as bruce tim sees her and that just you know it melts me it just melts me when i see the pictures of her because i was given the picture of her when i went for a callback at warner brothers 
And that, like, there was a picture of her holding her lasso, um, and it, it's a picture I still have. And that's how I always envision her. When I, when I imagine her, I just, she, that's how she looks. That's awesome. We, and we've had like plenty of different interpretations of Wonder Woman. Like in the movie, she's been around since World War I. Um, in the comic right. books, she was rebooted in the 80s to like be brand new to man's world. Um, so like late 80s, early 90s, she was just like the cartoon, like young, brand new, hasn't, you know, been a superhero for years or anything. There's just been such a back and forth, which is really cool to, to kind of see over the years. Um, but then they put her with that Superman guy, and I thought that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so Captain Marvel came out, another female-led superhero movie. Do you have any thoughts on that or what it might bode for future female-led superhero films? Like I know Black Widow's on the horizon, and then on the DC side, we've got the Birds of Prey coming soon, which will have Black Canary and Harley Quinn and um, all these Gotham-based superheroes. Well, and, and, you also have another, and you also have another Wonder Woman that's movie coming right. out. That's right. Very true. Yes, I, yeah. was, I wanted I mean, to ask if you have it. a cameo in Wonder Woman eighty four. <laughs> Are we going to see that? Um, you, you know what? I one. don't as of yet, but okay. I would like one. Yes. Um, you know, I said to I, I you know, I'll I'll New take hashtag. a phone voice. You know, I'll say like, please hold. Yes, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to have that. Um, you know, uh, I just I'm so excited that there are all these movies. I just think that there's such an audience for it and for these women and these characters to be in the forefront and not to be standing behind the guy who's standing behind the guy who's standing behind the guy. Sure. I just, mm-hmm. I, I think that um, it's so timely and it's so necessary. And I, I think that anytime as a young person, you look up at a screen or in a book or in a TV show and you see yourself either because they're the same sex as you or the same color as you or the same identity as you. It's just empowering. And so I think that anytime we see these women in these roles, it's a good thing. I really do. And I, you know, I think that it's only the beginning. I mean, look how long it took us to get the Wonder Woman movie. And right. that was a game changer, certainly. Mm-hmm. And because this, it, it did so well, and was so successful. And I think that the, the, you know, the gate is now open and I think that there'll be many, many, many more to come. I agree. I think the superhero genre is here to stay. <laughs> it's exciting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I mean, the people were talking about how it's like it was dying a while ago. It's not dying. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, when it's it done well, started. it's brilliant. And, yes. you know, and like there are going to be some duds. I mean, of course, like with any, you know, some franchises are better than other franchises. Um, some directors are more suited to it than other directors and, and like, but if you get, if you get that brilliant, you know, that wonderful script and that wonderful director and that wonderful actor, like you did with Wonder Woman, you know, it's, it's really special. Mm -hmm. The movie Wonder Woman, (laughs) you know, the the live action one, that other one. Yeah. We like you a little bit too. So it's, it's all good. I appreciate that guy. I know you like me. I like you. I mean, it's, it's like a little, like we, we, you know, I, I hope you guys know that. I mean, I um, I'm such fans of yours. Well, wow. That is that is definitely a uh, well, it's humbling to hear. Pinch me, yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> Just know it's true, and I hope I show that because I. I try to be as supportive on uh, Twitter as I can possibly be because I, oh, you sure. know, I just think sometimes it's there's such there's so many things out there that you just you want to say, hey, look at this one, right. you know, look yeah. at this one. This, these are these guys are good and they're smart and they're funny and and they're kind. I think that's you know that really jumps out for me that you know you guys are are sweet sweethearts. Well, you know, well, we I'm, we wouldn't have been able to do any of it if it weren't for for you and everyone else paving the way exactly. for us. Well, I think we're in it together. That's the truth. I mean, I think that, um, you know, as an actor, it's great that we have these projects, but we need to be able to talk about these projects and um, promote these projects. And I think like we we all work together. To me, it's teamwork. It really is. I thank you for for having me back on. And I think it's going to be excellent when you get to talk to Eric and Sam and hopefully Jim. 
Yeah, um, of course. And we'll work on we'll work on Kevin. <laughs> right, give him a little text. <laughs> yeah, we're excited. Well, can you tell us about anything else that you're working on right now that might not be Wonder Woman related, or maybe Airbud Six, I, maybe? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I guess any you, any, you any don't fun know commercials? About reunion. <laughs> you know what? Um, there is there. Nah, I, I can't. I, there's nothing I can actually talk about. I mean, look how long it took me to talk about this. That's right. true. And it was like so maddening. You know, stay tuned because there are a couple of things. But I, but I promise you this: when I can talk about it, I will talk to you guys about it. Well, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yes, always appreciated. We're definitely we've we've covered it all. So we, we thank you so much for coming on again. Hopefully it's not another two years before we talk to you again. <laughs> I'll be sure to tag you in every Fatal Five video we're putting out on Twitter, like I always do. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming out. And don't forget that hashtag JL. Oh, for mean. sure. That's important. For sure. And it's actually cute because when you put in JL, it'll come up. It's really cool. Ooh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perfect. it's really cool. But you know, the, the truth is really. The only way that the reunion is going to happen is if this movie, the JL, you know, versus the Fatal Five does well. Mm -hmm, I mean, right. Bruce said that, and it's absolutely true because, as we all know, money talks. Mm, so, um, you know, people can be nostalgic about things, but unless they, they say, no, 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 we're serious. We're going to support. We really support this with our pocketbooks. So, you know, if yeah. you guys could, uh, you know, each buy one, that would really help. I'll tell you, oh, we, we already all bought the digital and we're all planning on buying the physical as well. As as, yep. as, as well as oh, the man. fact that we all have DC Universe memberships and we'll be watching it on there as well. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to um, round it all out. Yeah. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Oh, no, thank, thank you. Thank you again, Susan. All right. We'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. And by we, I mean, I mean my dog and I. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Have a good night, you guys. Yeah, you, you too. too. Thank you. Thanks again. Okay. Bye. 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 You're welcome. <laughs> bye. <laughs>